Hi, everybody. I would like to tell you a story, no more and no less, about how different human fate can be. It will not be a funny story because I will tell you how I betrayed my best friend. But this is only one point of view because I see it all from a completely different angle. By the way, my name is Tanya and I just turned 17 not very long ago. It all started approximately 10 or maybe 11 years ago. I don't remember exactly. I was a little kid and lived with my parents in a small, cozy house on the outskirts of a little town. And I only had one friend, Olive. She was one and a half years older than me and lived on a nearby plot of land. Her parents were pretty poor, so they did not own a house. They just lived in an old trailer park on the land. But they were polite and nice people, so my mother supported my friendship with Olive. At that time, Olive and I were so inseparable that we even had a ceremony we did together in order to strengthen our friendship. Now, I understand that it was ridiculous and foolish, but for us little girls, it was extremely important. An old oak tree was near our house, and Olive suggested that we carve the words Olive and Tanya, friends forever, on its bark. I remember that Olive had stolen her father's knife. I remember that it was a miracle that we did not cut ourselves while we were carving the letters, and I even remember that my name was misspelled. I guess you probably have some good memories about your childhood friends too, right? That's why Olive and I were so terribly upset when my father got a job in the capital city of the state we lived in, and I realized that our moving was inevitable. We both cried a lot, for us it seemed like these stupid adults were separating us, us who were practically sisters. In order to make things easier for me, my parents registered an email address for me and suggested we do the same for Olive so that we could write to each other and stay in touch. Olive and I wrote to each other for a year or so, but less and less frequently, and then we stopped writing to each other at all. I lost the password to my email account and didn't create another. I went to school and made new friends there. However, I did not lose contact with Olive entirely. After three years, her parents brought her to our city. Both Olive and I were extremely happy to see each other. The abandoned correspondence was quickly forgotten and we spent the whole day together, with sincere pleasure walking in the nearby park. There was only one misunderstanding that came up between us. I could not stop talking about my school drama club, where I enrolled a little while ago and where I was already preparing for my first performance, but Olive seemed completely uninterested in it. Then I asked her what she was doing at our hometown school, and she replied that she was not doing anything in particular but not because there were no electives at my small country school, but rather because Olive was not into these silly things. The only topic that truly interested Olive was boys. I noticed right away how Olive batted her eyes at every boy that we met during our little promenade. And frankly speaking, I kind of found it disgusting at my 11 years of age. At that time, I thought boys were the most terrible creatures in the world. Yuck. Olive and I started to keep in touch again, but the next time I met her was approximately a year ago. For almost five years, we exchanged letters and pictures, and at that time, I didn't yet notice how my friend had changed. You see, when I wrote Olive about my dreams to go to college, to study to become an actress, and to get a job in one of the Broadway theaters, the response I got in the best-case scenario was, yeah, cool, and that was it. Olive would change the subject right away and share the details of her hectic private life with me. At first, I tried to count the number of boyfriends she had had, but soon I lost count. And when I asked my friend about her plans for life, I received at best a huge letter full of dreams about a rich, handsome, and cool husband. She was neither going to continue studying after school nor try to gain any professional skills. But I could tolerate all this before Olive came to see me again. A year ago, I broke up with my boyfriend, my first love, and it was a very difficult period in my life. Olive came to support me, but she chose a very peculiar way to do so. She decided that I simply needed to clear my head and took me to a dicey neighborhood with a lot of bars and clubs. Olive had already turned 18 by that time, and she looked even older, so I had to protect my friend from the unnecessary attention from grown-up men. 
Some of them even tried to buy us alcohol and did not believe that Olive and I were underage. Anyway, it took me a lot of effort to bring my friend back home. And Olive got offended that I wouldn't let her hang out with all these cool guys. Then I began to understand that Olive and I had become totally different people. I tried to minimize our communication, seldom picked up her calls and didn't answer her letters, hoping that she would understand and stop bothering me. But she did not. In one of the letters, she sent me a picture of an old oak where we had sworn to be best friends, and I felt ashamed. I decided to give Olive one more chance and listen to how it all turned out. On one quiet, calm night, my parents and I were awakened by a violent knocking at our door. Somebody was ringing the bell and demanded that we open the door. My father looked through the people, and suddenly the look on his face changed, and he let this person in. It was Olive, but hardly recognizable. First of all, she was pregnant, apparently in her second trimester. I opened my mouth wide when I saw her round belly. Second, Olive looked bad. Her hair was a mess. She looked untidy and there were bruises and scratches on her face and hands. She refused to explain what had happened, only saying that she was pregnant but did not know who the father was, and asked if she could stay with us for a few days. My parents could not say no to her, but I was not happy about the whole idea. And time will prove that I was right. On the next night, a few unpleasant-looking men on motorcycles approached our house, They demanded that Olive come out, but she flatly refused. My father tried to chase these people away, but they became aggressive. So my mother and I had to call the police before the situation got out of control. After that, I decided that I had had enough. I asked my father to drive Olive to a shelter for women with difficult life situations. He contemplated for a while and then agreed. My mother helped Olive to pack her things, and I simply went for a walk during this time. I did not want to say goodbye to Olive or explain how I felt. I blocked her on all my social networks and in my life. That was the end of my friendship with Olive. Maybe you will disapprove of my decision, or maybe you will think that what I did was right. Please tell me about it in the comments to my video, and share your thoughts about what you would have done if you were in my shoes.